Before we jump into the actual setup, there are a few important things you really need to know. PS3 emulators on Android are still very early in development, so it's best to keep your expectations realistic. You've probably seen some flashy YouTube thumbnails claiming these uh, emulators can run huge AAA games like GTA 5 at high frame rates, but that's simply not true. At least for now. What you can expect is smoother performance with lighter titles, especially two-dimensional or simple 2.5D games. As development continues, things may improve, but for now, that's the honest limit. Your performance will also depend heavily on the phone you're using. If you've got a Snapdragon processor, you're generally in better shape compared to other chips like Exynos, mainly because Snapdragon devices can take advantage of the optional Turnip graphics driver. This driver can give you a noticeable boost. And just so you know, the phone I'm using in this video is the Xiaomi Mi 9T from 2019. It has a Qualcomm Snapdragon 730 with an Adreno 680 GPU. So whatever performance you are seeing here should be considered about the minimum you can expect. Since my device is a bit older and on the low end side these days. Alright, with that out of the way, let's move on to the actual tutorial. The first thing you need to do is head over to the RPCSX GitHub page. Don't worry, I've already put the link down in the description so you don't have to search it for yourself. Yourself. Once you're on that page, scroll down until you see the releases section. You want to tap on the latest version and then download the APK file. Once the download is finished, go ahead and install it on your phone. Now before we actually open the emulator, there are a couple of important files you want to set up first. The most important one is the PlayStation 3 firmware, and that file is called PS3 up dad.pup. Without it, the emulator simply won't work, so you definitely want to have it ready before you move on. Another optional download is the Turnip graphics drivers. As I said before, this one is only for phones with Snapdragon processors. And finally, you'll want to create a folder somewhere on your device just for your PS3 games. That's where you'll store your ISOs, extracted folders, or your PKG and RAP files. The nice thing about RPCSX is that it supports all of those formats, which makes it pretty flexible. For example, in my setup, I've got a couple of ISO files, and I also have some PSN games in PKG format. Those usually come with an unlock file as well which turns the demo into the full game. That unlock file can be a PKG or a wrap. And either way, the process is about the same. Let's go back to the firmware download, since that's the one thing you absolutely need. Once you open the website, scroll down and choose the option that says update using a computer. Then hold down on download PS3 update and tap download link. Make sure you remember where you put it, because we'll need it in a second. Like I mentioned, the file name will be ps 3 updatepup I already have it downloaded, so I won't do it again here. Now let's quickly talk about the turnip drivers. If your phone does not have a snap Dragon processor, you can just skip this part. But if it has it, these drivers can give you a pretty big performance boost. If you are not sure what processor you have, just install the CPU Z app and open it. Right at the top, it'll tell you your chipset and GPU renderer. For example, mine shows Snapdragon 730 with an Adreno GPU. So I know I can use the turnip driver. There are two ways to get these drivers. The better way is to search for turnip drivers on Google and open the Adreno Tools driver page, where you can download the latest versions. Which version works best for your phone depends on testing, but I'd recommend starting with the newest one. Another easier option is to actually download them straight from within RPCSX, and I'll show you how to do that later in the video. Now that we got our files ready, let's open the emulator for the first time. It might take a little while to set itself up, so be patient. 
Once it loads, the very first step is installing the PS3 firmware we downloaded earlier. Tap the menu button in the top left corner, choose firmware, then find the PS3 update.pup file and select it. The installation takes a bit of time, so don't worry if it feels slow. While it's installing, you can start adding your games. But just know that both processes take a while. To add a game, tap the plus icon at the bottom right. The top option lets you pick PKG and RAP files. For example, I'll install Castle Clashers here, which is a PKG file. Once it's installed, you'll notice it's still locked. So I'll select the unlock option and choose the RAP file that goes with it. After refreshing, you can see the game is now unlocked. I'll do the same thing with Limbo. But this time, instead of a wrap file, the unlock comes as an, another PKG. So I just install that after the main game. For ISO files or extracted folders, you'll do the same thing, but choose the bottom option instead. Just point it to the folder where your games or ISO files are stored and let it install. Again, it can take a little while, so patience is key here. Now let's touch on settings. Because this emulator is still very new and not everything is fully optimized yet, most experienced users actually recommend leaving the settings at their defaults. You might see other videos suggesting changes like adjusting PPU threads, but in my testing and in others, those tweaks don't really improve performance right now. The one thing you should make sure of is that your renderer is set to Vulkan. If you scroll to the bottom of the video settings, you can also turn on performance overlay to check your FPS in games, which is pretty handy. Now let's set up the graphics drivers. Again, this part is only for Snapdragon devices. You want to go to the custom GPU driver in the settings. Here you can either import the turnip driver you downloaded earlier or just grab one directly from RPCSX. In order to do that, just hit the plus icon, choose download and then hit OK. Once the list pops up, choose a version and hit import. In order to import the driver you downloaded earlier, again, Hit the plus icon, select install and hit OK. Then choose the driver you downloaded earlier. Each turnip driver can behave differently, so don't be afraid to experiment a little until you find the one that works best for your device. As for using a gamepad, you don't need to tweak any settings. RPCSX automatically detects your controller so you can just plug it in or connect it and start playing without changing anything in the options. A couple of final notes before we wrap this up. Compiling the PPU modules takes quite a long time, so be ready to wait through that process. And because this emulator is still in development, you might run into bugs. For example, on my device, the game crashes whenever I try to use the touchscreen buttons, so I stick with a physical gamepad instead. If you want to hide the touchscreen controls, just tap the controller icon at the bottom right. And that's it for this tutorial. Hopefully this guide helps you get RPCSX up and running on your Android device. If you found this helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe.